In this video, we're going to explore conditional formatting in Power BI. I'm going to show you what it is and the options that you have for conditional formatting. And I'm also going to show you how you can use it to improve the readability of your Power BI reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So conditional formatting, if you're not familiar with it already, is a way to change the appearance of your data based on a condition. Now, it might be a change of color or showing different KPI icons. It's mostly used to make it easy for your users to see and find patterns and trends in your data. Maybe you want to show the headcount is increasing or decreasing over time, or maybe you want to show if the sales that you have are over or under target, or maybe you simply just want to highlight a custom set of data. Power BI provides you with a lot of ways that you can apply conditional formatting to your visuals. So let's use some examples so you can understand what I'm talking about. Here's a simple report that I built, which we'll use for the conditional formatting demo. So this data set that we're using today is the Northwind data set, which is the uh, sales information of a fictional company selling goods internationally. We have a few tables that we're working with today. We have the uh, orders table, which is the list of orders that have been made. We have the order details, which is the list of all the products within those orders, along with how much they were and how many were ordered. We have the list of products themselves, so the name of the products, the categories of those products, and the calendar, which I have created for time intelligence purposes. There is uh, already a relationship here that I've set up, um, but we won't bother with this today. I'll reference maybe one thing here, but it's not the most important bit in the demo. So, but I thought I'd show you. And then the last thing that I added uh, just to make lives easy is the sales measure, which simply calculates the sales for each of those orders by multiplying the unit price to the quantity. So let's start by putting the products and the sales into a table right here. And now we can sort it by sales descending. So the highest selling product is at the top. So it's sorted by the most popular product at the moment. However, maybe we want to use a gradient in this table to make it easier to show how the different sales differ across products. And this is a typical use case for conditional formatting. So to apply a conditional formatting, you either can go to the value you want to apply conditional formatting to under the well here. So let's say the sales, you will have the option here, conditional formatting, or you can go to the visualizations page here in the pane. Then you can simply go and select any values that have the FX icon next to it. Now the table visual has more options, which we'll look at later. So for now, we'll change this visual into a bar chart. And then we'll go to the format your visual pane once more. And under bars, you can see that we can change the individual colors for each of these products, or we can create conditional formatting here by clicking the FX button. So when you click the FX, button, you can see that you can change the format style of your bars based on a gradient. Here you can control what colors to use. So what is the minimum or what is the uh, highest value in your gradient? From here, we can also choose which value it is we should use to format the gradient against. So in this case, we want to use the sales measure instead of the product name. So we'll go to, I believe I have it here, sales. And then from here, we'll just hit OK. So now you can see that in our bar chart, the gradient changes based on the sales for each of those products. If you don't like the uh, conditional formatting that you have here, you can simply go back to uh, where the FX button was and then click the eraser icon, which will default it back to how it was. Let's hit the FX button once again. 
And I want you to notice that there are different format styles that you can choose in this window. So apart from the gradient, you can also set your own rules. Uh, let's say uh, if I click there, you will see that the options here change. You can see that the colors or how the colors are can be based on a certain rule that you set, either based on a number or a percentage of the data itself. So let's say we want to, I can see here that we have about 500,000 or it's quite a lot of numbers here, but let's say we want to highlight the um, products green if they are above 50,000 pounds. Otherwise, we should put them as red. So let's start by creating two rules here. Let's start by uh, doing the red and then we'll do the green. So we'll just pick it here from the picker to make it easy. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll change the comparisons to numbers because we want to compare against numbers. So if the value is greater than zero and less than 50,000, it should be red. If it's on or above 50,000 and less than or equals to, uh, we'll just put an infinite number here, uh, let's say 999. And there's no way to remove this second part. So we'll just have to put a number that is impossible here. Um, which will determine if they are green. So if you hit OK. OK, so here I sort of messed it up a little bit. If we hit the FX, we need to change what the field should be based on, which in this case, we want to check the sales for each of those products, not the count of product number, which is wrong. So if you select sales here and you hit OK, you'll see that all of these products are on or above 50,000. That's why they are green. Otherwise, they are red here in our formatting. So if we click the FX icon once more, there's another option here, field value, which gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to applying conditional formatting to your data. That's because you can use DAX to calculate dynamic values and change the colors of your charts based on the results, which we'll cover in a little bit later. Conditional formatting isn't just restricted to colors though. So you'll see other properties in your visual that you can apply conditional formatting to. So uh, a typical example would be the title. So you will go here under general and under title. Here you have the text that you can type to change the title of your visual. The FX icon next to it means that you can apply conditional formatting to change the title of this visual. So a good reason of why you might want to have a dynamic title is maybe you want to uh, say what the time range is of your visual or maybe show what category of data you're looking at. And because Power BI is a dynamic report where your users can create filters of their own, conditional formatting essentially creates a dynamic title which changes based on what the filters your users are using in your report. The DAX code that you need to build for this text is a little bit complex for beginners, but if you're interested in knowing how to implement it for yourself, I covered it in a separate video. So check that one out if you haven't yet. Let's now change this visual back into a table. And as you noticed uh, with the conditional formatting, the options that you have is different based on the visuals that you're using. So I switch around for demo purposes. Uh, however, the Power BI team is constantly adding more options that you can use. But the general rule of thumb is if, and whenever you see the FX icon, you can most likely conditionally format it. So as I mentioned before, uh, conditional formatting isn't just tied to colors. You also have other options based on the visual that you're at. So um, for example, here on the table, if we go to format your visual and under cell elements, you can choose which column you want to conditionally format. And then you have a few options here that you can toggle and enable, uh, which we'll go through now. So if we select sales and toggle background color, you'll see that it will automatically highlight the sales based on a gradient. You can customize it, of course, using the FX icon here which is a pretty simple um, conditional formatting. 
along with the background colors you can also choose to maybe change the color of your font instead which instead of obviously the background it will be the font color of that column you can also enable data bars which adds uh, a bar chart instead allowing you to visualize the numbers and see them in bar form you can also add icons to your uh, data so kpi icons like here for example it automatically added for us you can control that in the fx icon and changing the rules for the KPIs, as well as the style, which you have a few options here. The last option that you have here is an option to include a web, web URL, um, which gives a link to the uh, cell or for the column in your table. Now, at the moment, there's only one option here, the field value, which needs to be based on a data that you already have, which we don't have. So we'll quickly create that one. So I'll create a new measure here, and I'm just going to use the Google uh, web URL as an example, but uh, in reality, this would be the URL of uh, your data point. Maybe, uh, for example, maybe we want a link to the uh, product page for uh, whatever product we select in our table. So I'm just gonna type the URL here as, an, as a test, and then I'm gonna wrap it like this hit enter now we can use this as the field value in our web url conditional formatting so under sales or actually in fact we can do it in product name so we have the link on the product names themselves okay so elements web url and we'll say the value is based on the value in the url measure you'll see that now there is a um, underline on each of those products which will if you select this in a power bi report published in the service it will take you and open the browser for you so what you've just seen is the simplest example of using a dax measure to set the value for a conditional formatting uh, setting let me show you a more realistic example of using dax to customize conditional formatting for example i'm just gonna turn this off here and let's say for example we want to highlight the products here that belong to a certain category let's say beverages and i haven't introduced you to this one so if you have the categories here you have the products each product belongs to a category and while we want to see all of the products here, we may want to just highlight the products that we want uh, the category of. And let's use beverages as an example. We just want to highlight these products here in this table. And how would we do that? So by default, I'm not sure that you can do this using the default options available for you in the conditional formatting apart from using a field value. So in this case, you'll need to rely on the DAX calculation to do the work for us. So what we're going to do, I'm gonna delete this table. I'm gonna create a new measure here. I'm going to name this one beverages highlight equals to max to get the category name for each of these products. Now, you'll notice that here, if I drag this into a table here, a filter context gets applied to this measure and it just simply gives us the, um, uh, the category for each of those products. And that works where we are using the product name in the products table to filter the uh, categories table. Because we have this relationship that allows us to filter the categories using the product. So there is a filter uh, flow that goes back into the category. So if you want to use this method, just make sure that you have your cross filter going up back to the category. And then from here, we simply need to add an if statement to define which products we want to highlight and what the color should be for this conditional formatting. So we'll go to our new measure here and we'll wrap this with an if statement. So if the category is equals to uh, beverages, 
we'll just say give me green otherwise give me white so you'll see that uh, the value of this measure just gives us green if it's a beverage product and if it's not it gives us white so now we are ready to use this measure as a field value for our conditional formatting so we can simply remove that from our columns here go to uh, format your visual cell elements and then under sales or product name it doesn't matter we'll change the background color the gradient uh, format style we'll change that to a field value to be based on this new measure that we've created which created it here if we hit ok and there we go so you will see that now in our table we're highlighting all the products that belong to the categories uh, uh, beverages for colors you can use simple names like green white and red and power bi will automatically figure that out for you however if you have something more precise in terms of color schemes you can use hex or rgb values uh, as your colors here uh, which will give you that sort of option so I've copied a couple of examples here to show you, um, but maybe an example would be to show you this one. So an RGB for, I believe this is army green. And let me show you how the hex would look like. If I just change it, this is a hex for, I think aquamarine. And there you go. So you see that you have a bit more position when it comes to choosing the colors that you want to use as a highlighter for your uh, conditional formatting. I use field values on my conditional formattings a lot as it gives me a lot of flexibility because I'm using DAX, which gives you tons of options to work with. And in fact, in a couple of videos, I've already covered some of the more creative ways that you can use conditional formatting with DAX. So if you haven't yet, go check out those videos. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with conditional formatting and what options you have when it comes to conditional formatting in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.